Hey guys, thanks for joining me. So former BlackRock executive, I know BlackRock, big bad BlackRock, but he's a former executive. Um, and he's an investment advisor, Edward Dowd. He sounded the alarm on Moderna and Pfizer as sinking ships that investors need to abandon. And I think that's gonna get more apparent as we start combing through all this data that was dumped yesterday. So yesterday we received 10,000 pages of Pfizer's clinical trial data um, that they had submitted to the FDA to get full approval of their vaccine. And over the next few months, we're going to be getting all of the data that they submitted. They gave about 400,000 pages, and we're going to be getting all of those pages within the next several months. So as people comb through all of that and they start to see some uh, inconsistencies and start to see that there's some issues uh, possibly that get exposed in that data dump, then Edward Dowd's prediction will be even more spot on. But Dr. Peter McCullough posted a clip of Dowd discussing fraud surrounding clinical trials with Christy Lay on Twitter. So let's watch this clip. You know, I didn't personally take the jab primarily because I need two things. Operation Warp Anything sounded like a disaster. Um, anytime you rush something, there's going to be corners cut. Um, the drug was experimental because it normally, and the second thing I knew is it normally takes seven to 10 years for safety data to be effective on um, vaccines. So with those two things, I just said, I'll wait and watch. That's, so that's all I knew at the time. Then around May, June, July of last year, we started hearing all the anecdotes, all the studies started coming in, the side effects, the deaths, the, the athletes dropping. Um, you wouldn't find this on mainstream media. I'm an avid Twitter follower because I'm an investor, so I look for alternative sources of information. I've always been a seeker of the truth and information to make money for my clients back when I was at BlackRock and now for myself. So I was on the side effects early. I saw the VAERS database. And so I was very suspicious. Then around um, November, a friend of mine in the biotech industry pointed out to me that the all-cause mortality endpoint had been missed by Pfizer in the, in the original clinical trial. And I said, whoa, what, what, I didn't hear that. Okay, so what he means by that is when um, the clinical trial that was submitted, the data that was submitted by Pfizer um, actually states that there was no difference really in the all-cause mortality between the vaccinated and the unvaccinated group. So biologistics license application that was submitted and it actually, this was given to the, the FDA to apply for vaccine approval in November of 2021. And it states in that document, quote, from dose one started on July 27th, 2020 through the March 13th, 2020 data cutoff date, there were a total of 38 deaths. Okay, 38 total deaths between for everybody that, that uh, either vaccinated or unvaccinated. 21 were in the vaccinated group and 17 of those deaths were in the placebo group, and none of the deaths were considered related to vaccination, they said. So um, now, there, I mean, there's there were fewer deaths actually in the unvaccinated group and than there was the vaccinated group, although the margin of error is really minimal. So you can't say, well, there were more deaths, so maybe that was attributed to something like the vaccine or something. It was pretty much like it. there was no difference in deaths. So 21 deaths versus 17 deaths, in the, in the clinical trial data, the vaccine group had 21,047 participants. And in the placebo group, there was 20,794 participants. So a difference of about 250 participants. So 250 more people were in the vaccine group versus the unvaccinated group. But there were three more deaths, four more deaths in the um, in the uh, vaccinated group than the unvaccinated group. So again, I wouldn't read into that like the vaccine caused deaths or anything like that at that point because that's such a the margin of error. But it's it, it's very telling that there was no difference in deaths. And the old, the point of the vaccine is to prevent you from dying. Now, also preventing severe disease would be a good thing. I mean, look, death isn't the only thing that can happen to you, right? You could end up hospitalized. Um, with big medical bills, like you don't want that either. So we're not really talking about that. But when it comes to the outcome of deaths, they missed that mark when it comes to um, their clinical trial data. So Dowd also spoke about life insurance companies seeing a major uptick in mortality in 2021 versus 2020. Here's Edward Dowd on Bannon's War Room. Online is this: the insurance companies reported this week 
Um, we uh, saw mortality up in 21 versus 20, despite vaccines. That's number one issue. Number two, we saw a spike in younger working age individuals, which also coincided with the vaccine mandates in Q3. So that's just devastating right there. And I also want to give just a quick five companies that reported some of the numbers we're seeing. These are Q4 benefit ratio results versus baseline of 2019 pre-pandemic. Uh, Unum saw plus 36%, uh, Lincoln National plus 57%, Prudential plus 41%, uh, Reinsurance Group of America plus 21 percent and, and Hartford plus 32 percent. Yikes. OK, so we're seeing a lot of all cause mortality deaths. These are not necessarily related to covid. This is people dying of a lot of different things. And there's a lot we could take away from that. We could say, well, it was um, the lockdowns caused uh, tons of harm to society. People are dying more of Alzheimer's. People are dying more of depression, suicide, um, very, I'm sure, heart attacks and uh, diabetes deaths. I believe all of those are up as well. So, and you know, the insurance companies are up on this, right? Because they're the ones paying it out. They're the ones having to pay when somebody dies. So they're collecting all of this data. They've got a lot of data. And actually when the insurance companies start coming out more publicly with their robust data, we're going to see an interesting battle between the insurance companies and big pharma. So it'll be big insurance versus big pharma because the big insurance companies might start pointing the finger at big pharma and saying, your product didn't work. You know, it, they I mean, they could come out and say your product caused more damage. They could come out and say your product just didn't work at all. They could start pointing the finger at government and saying you guys and your lockdown strategies caused all these problems because now we're having to pay. We're stuck with the bill. It's the insurance companies that are stuck with the bill. So insurancenews.net actually spoke with reps from life insurance company One America. And Jonathan D. Neal, the company's spokesperson, said, quote, based upon our analysis, of Center for Disease Control national data, there has been a 40% increase in death rates for individuals age 18 to 64 years old. So 40% increase in death rates for individuals 18 to 64. Now we know that with COVID, the risk of death is above the age of 60. So it's 65 and older. So this is the group of people that shouldn't be dying during this pandemic and yet a 40% increase across the US when comparing Q3 2021 data to pre-pandemic data from the same period in 2019. So that is what they're seeing, 40% increase in a younger cohort. That's not so great. Um, again, we're gonna see this battle play out potentially between big insurance and big pharma and government. Um, Neil goes on to say that the impact for One America totals more than 100 million in group life insurance and disability claims for 2020 and in 2021, roughly 35 million and 80 million respectively. So the CEO of One America said, quote, we're seeing right now the highest death rates we've ever seen in the history of this business. Eee, that's not so good. That is pretty bad. Now, insurancenews.net also reports that that not every insurance company is seeing the same trend of this high of rates. They all seem to be seeing an uptick, but not necessarily at the 40%. In fact, Foster's Financial, which also sells life insurance products, said um, they said that 40% mortality increase is stunning, but they said that Forrester's is having a little bit of a different picture there. They said, we're not experiencing that type of mortality. Um, he said he wasn't, you know, he didn't give the numbers, but he did say, I will say we have certainly experienced an uptick in mortality. So for him to say that, it must be noticeable. So they're having an, a noticeable uptick in mortality, but he's saying 40% is stunning. So it'd be interesting to find out what level of increase they're seeing. But it does look like every single life insurance company is seeing an uptick in deaths, and they're not all COVID-related. I mean, COVID-related, I suppose, if you want to say um, that they are for, you know, the pand you know, pandemic-related, I guess. Now, Dowd is a financial guy, so of course he's going to give some financial warnings, and he predicts that we are closing in on some pretty dark financial times. The global debt uh, bubble is at, is at its peak, and um, it's becoming apparent, uh, given what's going on across the globe, that um, we're at the end. And due to that fact, um, we're going to see um, lots of crazy things in the financial markets. I think uh, we're going to see... Um, the credit markets become unhinged. The equity markets become unhinged. Um, you know, the Fed got a reprieve from COVID when they were able to, you know, the cover of COVID print 65% more money um, to keep this thing afloat. But we're at the end, end days here. And um, 
a lot of what you're seeing in the response from global governments is what I believe is um, setting up a system to, um, you know, under the guise of medical tyranny, to uh, prevent uh, the riots that are going to ensue once this thing all unwinds. That's my personal belief, and I, I watch what people do know what they say. Well, I'm sure now, and this was before the war, you know, he was saying this before we had this breakout. And so now, of course, they're going to be using the war as an excuse. And we're going to see a lot of, uh, I, I would imagine, you know, he's talking about them o using overreach and government powers and claiming that it's medical, you know, the pandemic. But we're probably also going to be see it based on, you know, misinformation because Russia bots and all of these other things. So, um, but you know, I think we all knew that the financial market was in real bad shape. And uh, potentially going to, you know, I think we're definitely facing a recession, potentially even a depression now with the war. So, you know, ominous stuff here. Um, and again, he said all of that before the war. And this guy, you know, Dowd, he's been ahead of the market trends throughout his career. Um, you can see here that it says right here, uh, Edward Dowd is, is, so he saw the dot-com bu bubble ready to burst, acted accordingly. Um, he also saw the the mortgage crisis, the mortgage-backed securities crisis. So he has been on the forefront of, of predicting what is going to happen. He's very savvy. He, like he said, he, he kind of gets the underground news. Maybe he's even, maybe he's even watching this show. Um, he's getting sources from everywhere. He's not just paying attention to the mainstream news because the mainstream news you know, those reporters are just kind of regurgitating the talking points that they're given. He wants to know what's really going on because he's got money at stake. So whenever there's money at stake, people are paying way more attention. And that is why the insurance companies, I think what we need to pay attention to, and I'll be trying to follow Edward Dowd and maybe even try to get him on the show to talk to him a little bit more. But um, I think it's it's going to be really interesting to see how life insurance companies uh, begin to react and actual, and really the research and the data that they come up with because they're the ones footing the bill. So they're going to be really, really uh, diligent and they're gonna be scrutinizing and they're gonna know what in the world is going on and are they really truly liable and do they really need to pay this stuff out? That's what they're trying to figure out. So the battle is on and I think it'll be interesting watching how this battle unfolds between big insurance, big pharma, the government, all of that. So I'll be paying much closer attention to this and following it along, and then hopefully giving you guys some updates as as things come out. But I'm sure right now they're playing it pretty close to the vest. If they do have something and they want to go after Big Pharma, for example, you know, that's going to be a legal battle. And so I'm sure they're um, suiting up, preparing for battle. And I don't know what kind of information we'll be getting or when, uh, because it would be potentially a legal fight. So it'll be really, really interesting to see how it goes. All right, guys, thank you so much for watching. Please be sure to, if you'd like to email me, you certainly can do that, kim at kimiverson.com. You can also uh, follow me on Locals. I'm also on Rumble, YouTube, uh, all of those great places. So be sure to check me out. Thank you so much for watching. Bye-bye.